Uh, good morning. Uh, we're gonna do lab today. Let me get my lab coat. In this first video, what I'm going to do is uh, read to you the pre-lab and on the board here, maybe uh, draw the structure of a sentinelide and perhaps uh, discuss a little bit about extra, a little bit about the uh, physical uh, properties of a sentinelide that allows it to be recrystallized from water. And then uh, I'll do the lab in kind of silent mode. I will just mix things and pour and weigh and uh, there will be a time uh, acceleration for uh, waiting for things to cool down and things like that. So it'll be already fast forwarded on the video. So, um, and I'll note how many minutes it, it takes for that. And uh, yeah, so that's the lab. Um, we're gonna recrystallize this stuff, uh, setinolide. And um, it has this molecular formula CH3COnHC6H5. Its molecular weight is 135.17. Um, its melting point is 113.0 to 116.0. That's the melting point. It's always a range. Um, gives you information about warning if swallowed and stuff like that. But uh, that's a setanolide, okay? A setanolide related to acetic acid in a way. So let me read the lab. If uh, you don't want to watch this video to read the lab, then you can just read the lab on your lab manual, which is that lab is posted on Canvas, okay? So lab one, recrystallization of acetonolide. Before coming to the lab, well, you should obviously read the discussion procedure and objective section for this experiment so you're safely operating in the lab. Um, recrystallization is the most important and widely used method of purification of organic compounds. Starting compounds or reaction products often contain significant amounts of impurities that need to be separated. Pure reaction products are needed to be uh, to calculate an experimental yield as well as to characterize them by physical and spectroscopic methods. The theory of recrystallization relies on chemical differences in solubility between the desired compounds and impurities. Ideally, impurities should be slightly soluble in the chosen solvent. The so chosen solvent should not dissolve the compound at room temperature, but dissolve at high temperature. Acetanolide undergoes air oxidation to afford a brown impurity over time. In this experiment, you will purify acetanolide from these impurities by the process of recrystallization. Those are the brown um, kind of impure particles there. That was mentioned just previously by me. Objectives. At the end of this experiment, you should be able to describe the experimental method employed for recrystallization of solids. Describe the experimental apparatus and purpose for gravity and vacuum filtration. And describe the use of decolorizing charcoal in recrystallizations. So the recrystallization of acetanolide procedure, we're going to place 5 grams of acetanolide and 50 milliliters of water in a 250 milliliter Erlenmeyer flask. We're going to clamp this flask on a ring stand with the other apparatus shown in figure 1 and place a boiling stick into the flask. We use a boiling stick because we can remove the boiling stick easily, but a boiling stone, those little granules, are harder to remove. So we're gonna bring the water to a boil and continue adding water in 10 milliliter portions until the acetonolide has been completely dissolved. Then we're gonna add 10 milliliters additional water for good measure, turn the burner off, and remove from the heat source. We're using a Bunsen burner because we're using water, and this is the last time we'll use a Bunsen burner in the organic chemistry lab. If you wait too long between each addition, the water will boil away and you will never be able to dissolve the acetonolide. Note, some solid impurities may never dissolve, so the trick is to add water in portions until there is no longer an appearance that more solid is dissolving. After dissolution is complete, Remove the flask using a sidearm clamp and cool briefly. Add a generous scoop of activated charcoal. That'll be the black powder that I use. Reheat the flask just until boiling, then turn the flame off. Activated charcoal has a high surface area and removes colored organic impurities from aqueous solutions. 
The same technology is used in swimming pool filters and tap water purification filters. At this point, a vacuum filtration will be performed on the hot solution. The black activated charcoal will be separated and the hot aqueous solution containing acetanolide will pass through the filter paper. Clamp a sidearm Erlenmeyer flask as shown in figure two. While the solution is hot, pour the solution by holding the sidearm clamp. It is sometimes useful to swirl the contents before pouring so that all the material is transferred to the Buchner funnel. Washing the charcoal is only necessary if there is evidence of crystallization on top of the filter funnel, which might be seen as white crystals. If the resulting, resultant solution contains colored impurities, not enough activated charcoal was used and the treatment will have to be repeated. It is normal for crystals to form as the hot solution of acetanolide is rapidly cooled in the sidearm flask. Take the sidearm Erlenmeyer flask and apply heat using the Bunsen burner once again. When the acetanolide has fully dissolved, allow crystallization to occur by slowly cooling the solution undisturbed until it is cooled to the touch. We'll do that on the countertop. It may be further cooled by placing it in the freezer or an ice water bath to increase the yield of recrystallated, recrystallized acetanolide. Sometimes you get a super saturated solution and I need to use a glass stirring rod and um, scratch the sides of the flask to induce crystallization. So you might see that in the video. Set up a vacuum filtration apparatus using a clean Buchner funnel and filter paper and collect the crystals by filtration. Carefully transfer the filter cake to a tiered watch glass and allow the crystals to dry out until the next laboratory period. So that's when I'll stop the video and uh, I, I here today have to wait until the next lab period, um, you know, to, to do this. Today's, what, Thursday, Wednesday? Yeah, I could come in tomorrow and, and do that. I might do it Monday. I don't know. It depends how much work I get done today. Um, other work, not lab work. Weigh the dried crystals. So that'll be tomorrow, okay? So you make a little note here in your in your in your lab manual weigh the dried crystals that's where we'll do it um, on the next lab period weigh the dried crystals to obtain a yield and calculate a percent recovery pack two to three millimeters of finely ground crystals into a micro capillary and perform a melting point analysis of the purified material using a melting point apparatus or heated oil bath um, i'll probably do that in my at home in my basement uh, determine the melting point of the crude acetanolide as well. These physical characteristics can be done in parallel at the same time. All right, let's do it. Big. Big.